Oh, hello guys. Hello property lovers. Welcome to Property Focus, your window into the world of architecture, building, construction and real estate. Owen Ochieng reached out to us and asked Property Focus, document something on off-grid solutions, energy solutions. And luckily we got one we thought was quite interesting. Off-grid energy meaning completely disconnected from the national energy grid. We look at a solution where one can generate energy for a household. Welcome to Property Focus. I'm your host. Peter Gigi. Well, thank you for tuning in and staying tuned. Now, Daniel over here is a sustainable renewable energy expert, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about this device. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming and uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Daniel Mungai. Yes. I'm an agribusiness uh, and uh, renewable energy expert. Yes. I've been working in the agribusiness and renewable energy space for five years, mm -hmm. specifically on the biogas sector. Yeah. So what do we have here? Well, yeah, so this is a, um, a biogas uh, technology. It's an innovation from uh, Israel yeah. and that converts uh, organic waste mm -hmm. into very, very amazing product, mm -hmm. usable energy and also uh, biofertilizer. List what is defined as organic waste. Yeah, so organic waste basically is a household waste that we, we generate. This could be kitchen waste, potato peels, market waste, and also farm waste, which could be crop uh, residue, and also uh, animal waste, which could be you know, cow manure, pig waste, mm -hmm. and any, any waste that can actually biodegrade. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you put in the waste where? So basically the system has an inlet, yes. and it has an outlet. So you put the, the, the waste in the inlet, and the waste goes in the digester. And then there is a, through a biological process, we have a breaking down of the organic matter by a bacteria to the now gas, which is actually methane, which is a natural gas, and also a organic fertilizer, which is a super safe and uh, you know, very, very nutrient adorned kind of a fertilizer. Daniel, how does one tell the system is operating optimally? So there are, there are different ways that you can see. As you can see, our system is on the ground, meaning that you, know, you can visually see whether the system is healthy. But, but be, be, def, uh, basically, you look at the, at the apartment because we have the digester here and we have the uh, gas uh, uh, storage. In the gas storage, when the system is full, like you can see now, you, you know that the system is working because you can see the gas. If the system is not working, definitely you don't have you know, gas filling up in the system. That is one of the things. The other thing is you will realize with the amount of gas that comes in the kitchen because for this system we say it gives you about six hours of cooking. So for example, if you get lesser than that, definitely you understand that the system may not be working optimally. How much material does one need to put into this system? So this system uh, uses, um, with, in regards to uh, kitchen waste, because we have different kind of waste, kitchen waste and uh, you know, undigested waste have more energy. So kitchen waste and other potato peels uh, you put about uh, 18 kgs in the system. Uh, for animal waste, which is more processed by the animal, you put about 45 kgs of uh, animal waste. Now, is this device only used in the rural areas or is it also used in the city? Well, this technology is for all homes, and that's why we call it home biogas. Yes. So basically, you can use it in the rural area. You get, we have it in, uh, you know, in the urban area, mm. and even in the rural area. In Kenya, we have it in more than 20 counties, as far as Kisumu, and even having farmers in the rural areas putting the system because the system is pretty interesting and easy to use. Mm -hmm. So you just put it on the ground. You don't need to do any excavation. So that means you can put it anywhere, even you know, in a small space mm -hmm. or in a big uh, you know, piece of land. Okay, so how often does one have to generate waste to use this system? So basically it will depend with the type of waste. For example, if you're talking about household waste, all of us generated some waste in the morning, you know, we took some breakfast. Yeah. And that means we had something that was left and that will happen. So basically we, we generate waste all the time, but the system requires once feeding in the morning. So once you feed once in the morning with whatever waste you have, then that is good to keep the system, you know, moving. For, uh, you know, for uh, like livestock farmers, uh, cow farmers, I mean with uh, pigs, they, uh, you know, they generate, depending on how much waste they generate, with our limitation of the minimum of 45 kgs, we uh, advise that you, you put the waste in the morning once a day 
And then the system itself will actually digest the waste and give you out the biofertilizer through its own process. So your work is just to put the waste and everything else, uh, every, everything else runs well. So the idea here is you, you, know, you just put once in a day. You know, that is one of the factors that we consider actually when we're installing the system. One of the factors is we look at the amount of waste that you have. We advise the size of the system you can install. And you also look at the energy needs. So we don't want to give you a system and give you energy that you cannot really exhaust because one of the other disadvantages that will come out of it is if we release this kind of you know, uh, methane in the atmosphere, it's one of the you know, greenhouse gas that uh, really cause um, uh, climate, uh, climate change. Yeah. Amazing, brilliant. Give us your parting shot. This is, this is fantastic. So I would um, really urge our viewers to really adopt this uh, kind of technology because uh, everything now is moving to sustainable solution. And uh, honestly speaking, I feel that uh, all of us have a responsibility to take care of ourselves and take care of the environment. And this is one of the way I consider that you're able to take care of the environment because if I am able to manage the smaller waste I have, then I don't have to load it on the municipal council. If I'm able to generate my own waste, because this is really a sufficient way of generating my own energy, then it means that I don't need to rely on the conventional way of cooking, which, uh, you know, energy actually contributes about 60% of, uh, you know, uh, the greenhouse emission. So it means that I'm self-sufficient. And this is really interesting for me. And I think it's something I, I would like to urge our viewers. When we are developing our property, when we are thinking about building and everything else, this is a must-have in our household. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Thank you for having me. It's amazing the amount of things that are just being done in the sustainable space. You only caught this on Property Focus. When you look at it, recycling is the right thing to do. And we're going to have a chat with an expert to tell us a little bit more about this product. Good. Well, thank you for coming on to the show and welcome once again. Thank you for coming back to us. Briefly introduce yourself. I know I know you, but our viewers need to get to know you a bit better. I'm uh, Omri Cohen. Yes. Um, I am the CEO of Kalot Kenya. Kalot Kenya is, uh, is an expert in... Uh, renewable and off-grid technologies uh, invented and uh, uh, manufactured in Israel. Yes. And we are here to talk about uh, home biogas, which is one of our main technologies. Now, what areas do you specialize in when it comes to how buildings interact with renewable, uh, sustainable products? So th there's a there's few projects that we, we, we have, like uh, water uh, purification and solar water heaters, but the main one uh, is uh, the... Uh, home biogas, yes. which is uh, an amazing technology converting uh, waste mm -hmm. into uh, cooking gas and uh, um, agricultural uh, fertilizer. With waste, you say, what waste are we talking about? Okay, waste is actually organic waste. So the, the best uh, is cow dung because of the microorganisms, and you will hear from the experts later. Okay. Uh, but any organic waste like food waste, animal manure, uh, that can be used in the biogas to convert waste into uh, gas. Now, what need did you identify in the market when you were starting out here in Kenya? Everybody knows about solar, everybody knows about water problems, but not everybody knows about uh, clean cooking issues that uh, Kenyans are, are encountering. Uh, Kenyans today mainly um, cook uh, with uh, charcoal or wood and that is a very very uh, dangerous way to cook because of inhalation of smoke and yes. in the world today about four and a half million people die every year from smoke inhalation yes. and the pollution of cooking with charcoals uh, is I think around two percent of the world's uh, uh, reason for uh, uh, pollution. Yeah. On top of everything, if you uh, probably show this uh, picture later, yes. you'll see that there's hardly any forest left in Kenya yes. in comparison to Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, Burundi. Yes. Kenya is dry yes. and that is a serious effect yes. on the environment. Uh -huh. 
Now, based on your research, how can Kenyans benefit from the uptake of this uh, sustainable, renewable product? Well, first of all, it's, mo it's a, it's a money-saving uh, uh, technology because people are now spending about five to 10,000 shillings, depending on how much they cook, yeah. uh, on charcoals or on, uh, on uh, LPG. Mm -hmm. This is free. It's free cooking. It's converting waste into, uh, into cooking gas. Now you win about six hours of cooking gas, mm -hmm. uh, which is quite a lot for a family. Yes. Uh, another advantage is that you can use the fertilizer that comes out as a byproduct from the biogas mm -hmm. uh, to uh, improve the productivity of your agriculture, even if it's domestic or if it's commercial. Now, I know you are touched on this, but globally, if we continue to ignore the use of sustainable products, what's likely to happen? As I mentioned before, first of all, you can see that Kenya is al already suffering from, uh, from uh, uh, being one of the leading countries that is losing, uh, losing trees. So it's, it's not something that we make up or, or Kalot makes up. Mm -hmm. It's something that you can read all over the place. Uh, you can also see that the temperatures in the world and also in Kenya have been rising for the last 100 years significantly because of the uh, loss of, uh, of, of forestry. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to promote here is a few things. On the global scale is first of all, stop cutting trees, yes. stop using charcoal, yes. stop, uh, uh, so, uh, stop helping the global warming. Yes. On the personal level, yeah. you can win or save a lot of money you can get six hours of clean cooking. Clean cooking means that you don't inhale smoke. Yes. Clean cooking means that you don't get any risks of flammable LNG, uh, L LPG. Mm -hmm. Clean cooking means that you can uh, use your waste that is usually uh, been thrown to convert your waste into, uh, into proper energy and cooking gas, which is, uh, which is free, mm -hmm. free gas. So no more black cooking pots or sufurias for that matter. No, not at, all, not at all. And no smell, and by no the way. <clears throat> no smell. No smell at all? Okay. No smell from the manure and no smell from the, uh, ga from the gas itself. Well, Omri, give us your parting shots. Uh, look, um, I would say that, uh, like I used to say in the past when we met, uh, there's, there's many, many companies uh, that bring all kinds of solutions. Israel is known for its quality. I urge you to come and check these technologies out and especially the biogas because it's going to make your life much better, yeah. healthier, mm -hmm. uh, converting uh, whatever you're doing now mm -hmm. to a clean cooking uh, solution. The most important thing, yes. Peter, is yeah. be part of the solution, mm -hmm. not the pollution. Lovely. Like it. Thank you for coming onto the show. Thank you for having us. Remember, guys, as Omri says, be part of the solution and not the pollution. Stay tuned. We've got more on this sustainable material. We're going to get right back in just a moment. That was amazing. We've got our billboards up next and a materials profile with Mike there on after. Stay tuned. Did you know that with a home biogas system, you can produce up to six hours of cooking gas per day from animal waste and kitchen waste? Our biogas system is built to help you save money and live a smoke-free and healthier life. To learn more, call us at 0111-212-242 or visit our website at www.klot.co.ke. Well, thank you for staying with us and welcome back. Now we're going to learn from an expert on sustainable energy. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Brilliant. Tell us about yourself. I'm Michael Munuve. Yes. I work with Kalot Kenya mm -hmm. and I'm the home biogas technician. Tell us about this particular product. Okay, home biogas system uh, is just an Israeli-based product, uh, which in, here in Kenya, uh, Kalot, we are the distributors. So this is just a... Uh, simple system yeah. uh, it converts uh, organic waste into natural clean cooking gas okay. and also gives you a natural liquid fertilizer yes. which which you can use in your farm how do you know if this product is working optimally in hot weather conditions it performs best mm -hmm. okay uh, in cold seasons like now yeah. you might notice in at your stove the the flame is a bit low 
yeah, that's understandable because all biogases, yes. they have a bit of challenges in cold seasons. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how do you install this product? There are a few things yes. before installation that uh, we consider. Mm -hmm. First, you, you, the client mm -hmm. has to have their uh, availability source of waste. Yes. Yeah, you have to have um, uh, water. We need a lot of water. Yeah, and then you need to have uh, a, uh, the space that uh, the system can fit in. It should, the, because we consider like uh, three things before installing the system. One, the system should be opened in an open place and it, sh it should not be under a shed. Uh, it should also be installed on a flat level ground. Yeah, and it's, it should also be installed nearest to the kitchen, not more than 20 meters, because we consider the pressure of, uh, as you know, the pressure of biogas is not as compressed as the LPG gas. So when you put it further from your kitchen, uh, the pressure will be a bit low. We have requirements that you need to have before we come to the site. For the pressure? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll just start with the cow dung. Yeah, you need to have four drums, mm -hmm. the 200 liter drum, you need to have four of them, that's roughly 800 liters. Water, we need like 4,500 liters, yeah, uh, and also we need, we need uh, wheelbarrows, two wheelbarrows of sand, yeah, and that's all. Mm -hmm. When we have those, we are good to go. For the sand, the sand, uh, we put them in, we have the sandbags provided with you in the, in the unit. The sandbags are used for compressing the gas to flow to your kitchen. Yeah, without the sandbags, you might be uh, talk, t telling your, maybe your children to go lie to the system and then for you to get the pressure. Yeah. Can this device be used in the city? I can see here it's a garden area. Can it be used in urban areas? Yeah, 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 yeah. As uh, the, uh, this home biogas system, uh, it can be used also in urban areas, not only in rural areas, because we have uh, an option. Not only cow dung, you can also use food scraps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the initial installation, you need cow dung. Yeah, when you have cow dung, yes. we, ca we can do for the initial installation. Yeah. Afterwards, after the process has already activated, mm -hmm. then you can use food scraps. Okay. Yeah. So once it's already set up, how then do you put in the food scraps or the cow dung? How, do, how does the process all happen? Once it's installed, we give it a period of like two weeks mm -hmm. for the process to activate. After the activation process, mm -hmm. now uh, the bag is already full, the gas tank. So, uh, the key thing with the, with the system yes. is feeding. Yes. So, in the morning, after, like, if you activated it uh, yesterday, the, the next day in the morning, you should start feeding. So, the feeding ratio is uh, one to two. So, if you have, like, one bucket of cow dung, you have to dilute it, to, dilute it with two buckets of water. So, that's for cow dung. Yeah. What about food scraps? If it's food scraps, ratio is one to one, to one. and uh, this goes for the 20 liter bucket, mm -hmm. yeah. So if it's, uh, I was saying if it's cow dung, uh, the ratio is one to two, but the buckets you put in there are four buckets of the solution, mm -hmm. yeah. So four buckets each day, then you can get your six hours of cooking gas. Give us your parting shot. Technically, what I can say, uh, this is just a simple system. Yes. It's not that complex. Yeah. It's easy to install. Yes. Uh, uh, it gives you uh, both cooking gas and a clean natural fertilizer, which you can use in your farm. Yeah. In fact, the liquid fertilizer, some people are selling it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think it's an added advantage to the farmer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the other thing, the system is not permanent mm -hmm. you can move it mm -hmm. uh, and also we as Kalot yes. we say this uh, be a part of the solution not don't be part of the pollution okay. yeah uh -huh. in addition yes. stop cutting trees and use this sustainable solution I like it stop cutting trees and use sustainable products
Well, super amazing, who knew? Just from this, you could cook up a meal, fantastic. Just love the solutions that are coming into play. Now, if you want more topics, reach out to us on our socials. We'll be more than happy to hear from you. But for now, ciao, see you later. See you next week, same time, same place. I've been your host, Peter Ngigi.